For week six, we're going to finish up ACT science with the final six points. And then for English, we're adding on eight more points with a final five points next week. When we take a look at the points we're adding, it's important to know where they go and where you'll see them. For conflicting viewpoints, you're only going to see one passage like this on test day. And for English, when you're talking about word choice and sentence sense, those are going to be sprinkled among the different questions you're going to see. So when it comes to conflicting viewpoints, this is a really good one to add on to your score because you're going to be able to identify it immediately. You're going to know which passage is conflicting viewpoints. And depending on how well you usually do on these, you can either start with conflicting viewpoints or you can end with conflicting viewpoints. You don't have to do all the passages in order. No matter when you do complete the conflicting viewpoints passage, make sure you're following the method. It's really helpful in not getting confused when it comes to identifying the hypothesis or theory that's being talked about. The intro text is actually really important because if it's provided as background information, it's information that the scientists, whether there's two or three scientists, all of them have to agree on that. Background information is information that is generally agreed upon. So you can use that to your advantage when they ask questions about all of the scientists would agree or both scientists would agree. When you are looking at the different viewpoints, you're going to not only split up reading the viewpoints, but also answering the questions. So after you read the first author's viewpoint, then go to the question or questions that have to do with that particular idea. Then go back and read the second author's viewpoint, answer questions about that. And if there's a third author, read the third author's viewpoint last, answer questions about the third author's viewpoint, and then do the questions that refer to both or all three. And this is going to help keep straight who said what, which is something that we think about when we're doing reading. Here is intro information. Go ahead and pause the video and read through this information. Now that you have this background information, you know what they'd agree on. And we're going to keep this in mind when we see our third question. So in all, we want to keep in mind our method. Now that we have Scientist 1 up on the screen, go ahead and pause the video and read through Scientist 1's idea. When we're looking at a scientist's idea, we're looking for the theory that the scientist would agree with. And here it has to do with the amount of oxygen in the blood. There's not enough, um, if there's not enough oxygen in the blood, you will yawn. So it's a thing. It actually, it helps us to exhale the carbon dioxide and then we're able to bring more oxygen in. So that's what the author's talking about. It's very important for people to yawn because it, and just talking about yawning, it's hard not to yawn. But what the author's trying to say is that it depends on oxygen levels. So we could go to scientist two and read scientist two and then answer that, all the questions. But remember our method is to go right to the questions that have to do with just scientist one. So which of the following would keep a person from yawning? What would prevent them from yawning? So we know it has to do with oxygen in the bloodstream. So answer choices A and D look really good. Stretching, we didn't hear anything about stretching, and that's actually why this method works really well, because passage two is about stretching. Reduce pressure on the lungs, not mentioned. And here, is it increase the amount of carbon dioxide or increase the amount of oxygen? What would prevent or keep a person from yawning? Well, if there's too much carbon dioxide, that will cause a yawn. So enough oxygen, if you increase the oxygen, it will prevent yawning. That's your choice, D. So let's go back to passage two, or scientist two here. Go ahead and pause the video and read through scientist two. As I mentioned, they are gonna talk about stretching. And here it has to do with, it says oxygen rich, oxygen depleted in normal air all lead to the same average number of yawns. So it doesn't have to do with what scientist one was talking about. It's a stretching mechanism. So let's go ahead to the question that talks about scientist two. According to scientist two, the best evidence that respiration is not the primary function of yawning is that, well, you can get, at, get rid of H and J because we know it has to do with stretching. And is it impressive that individuals who are paralyzed on one side can stretch limbs on both sides or individuals who are paralyzed on one side can stretch their mobile side by yawning? Well, which one would be more impressive? Because it says the best evidence. So the fact that even though the person can't voluntarily move the limbs on the paralyzed side, but yawning helps them to stretch, 
That is compelling evidence. So the correct answer is answer choice F. Now, when it comes to that question that talks about both, remember that the intro information is really, really helpful. So both scientists would agree that, and in the introductory information, it talked about what a yawn actually is. What you're going to find is that that information matches up perfectly with answer choice G, uh, answer choice B. When we're looking at the other answer choices, you can get rid of anything that has to do with one scientist or the other. So answer choice D would be scientist two. Answer choice C is really tricky. So let's go back to the intro information. It says, yawning has been associated with drowsiness or weariness, as well as acute myocardial infarction and aortic dissection. It has been associated with is not the same thing as the first part where it says at the deepest part of the breath. So the first part is talking about the definition of a yawn because it says the result is a yawn. The next part, even though it is stated in the intro information, it only says it's been associated with. So be really careful not to pick answer choices that could be true, but based on the information provided, don't have enough compelling evidence. So keep in mind this conflicting viewpoints approach. You'll be able to get your points on test day. Six points for you.